Thank you. I'm always following lunch and getting the babies who come after lunch. But we'll make this painless. I'm Vanessa Bash, your general major on director. Um, I bring greetings if you were out and went to get another lunch over to the box lunch center. See, it's not, you understand, it's not very popular. So I uh, bring greetings from Dr. Kane if you did not hear her welcome. This session is on customer service. You all have customers. They're about this size. They're about this size. And then they're about this size and they shave. They're all that size. And they know it all. Because they've been on the bus for 15 years. At least some of them since the preschool or three year old school. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to make those people happy. You all know you're carrying your best current cash to offer, right? You are carrying their precious cargo. They love their children. Their children do nothing wrong. So with the advent of cameras on the bus, we can bring clarity to parents. I love cameras on the bus. I know that, and I have to drive, actually, the computer back here. I hate talking to you all like this because it's just not very comfortable, and then I have to have my back to people. Yeah, she signed it. It's fine. We got to sign it one. Um, and just hold it. Now, um, Margaret, I'm going to come in. She's going to come in if, um, once she gets finished doing the other thing. We have an expectation to be superior every day. Everything you leave your house, you go get your bus, you warm it up in the winter time, you cool it down in the summertime, or in spring, you cool it down, and you expect to be superior. None of us leave anywhere thinking, okay, I'm mediocre today. I'm gonna be mediocre. Oh, matter of fact, I'm gonna be four. I'm just gonna have four service every day. We don't do that. The children come to your bus, they're already displaying body language. I have a whole slide on body language. Well, you know, body language you use more than any other language your entire lifetime. It's actually 77% of how we relate to each other. It's 77%. So, you work with exceptional people. They're little people. They're little people. Who, where's the elementary school? Well, the whole combination. Where's the, I had, I had their mother and father bus drivers. Well, I'm, okay, well, I'm the, I had their mother and father principal. You know, when, when they, But you know what, there's something to be said for longevity in creating relationships. It's kind of like only being a Ford guy. If you are a Ford guy, and if you don't take care of the car, it's gonna drink oil. If you are a Ford guy, you take care of it, car take you on in. Matter of fact, you might do it like some women with purses. Get rid of the purse before it wants to be gone because you'll take care of what you have. Well, guess what? If you take care of cargo, we call children every day. Somebody told me in the last session that they have children for almost four hours in one day because they transport children to um, Kennedy Creek um, in Baltimore. So I told them, watch out for the sinkhole because those streets are still closed. So I asked, asked Mr. Pender for your route that's going to be a detour because you can't go that way. I said, yeah, the sinkhole is still there. I think they fixed it one time for like a concert. Get the people that's got to drive Monday through Friday. They're going to fix it for Saturday night. So just be sure that you know who's getting on your bus. As customers, as, as, as servers of, of, of customers, we need to make absolutely sure that you can meet their needs. That means when the parents come to the bus with their babies in the morning and ask you a gamut of questions, what are we going to say? We're oh, not yeah. we're, 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 <laughs> we're gonna say, I'll get back to you and I'll find out. What we're not going to say is, I don't know. 
because when you say you don't know, they go directly back in the house and they call in somebody. They either call the contractor or they call him Mr. Pender or they call him Margaret Allen. Allen. They're calling someone. And with the advent of these little things that we have in our hip pocket all the time, they call it sooner than later. When we had a landline, it was chances could be they might forget the call. But if this is buzzing and beeping and doing whatever else it's doing, I don't have pockets, so I don't, I don't know what it'd be doing back there. But apparently, it tells people that they have a message. I'm a, look, I'm a landline girl. I still got one at the house. I go in my house, come 5 o'clock. This is in the bottom of my purse. And people say, I called you. I said, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I said, if you go on that cell phone, you're never going to get me. You know, not, not if I'm not working. I'm in the house. And what did, did we do before, the, before cell phone? You left a message. <laughs> I don't have voice mail. Purposely, I talk to people all day long. So I have to recharge. That's what you all are doing. You're recharging. Getting ready for the babies to come back. And they'll be back. They're coming back. <laughs> and I always like to tell people, you know you're going to see them again, right? Y'all got calls, got to go to the Jiffy Loop. Y'all got to have blood drawn. Y'all got to get along. I said, I'm so going to what happened to me. I had a baby. I had to expel him twice when I was a principal. I go into the educator's long name for the credit union. He's sitting behind the desk. He is now 31 years old, and he's the loan officer. <laughs> I tell you that because depending on the treatment they received, starting at 6.30, 7 o'clock, whatever time, go pick up time for you. you're going to see him again. You know, I find that it is a growing interest in putting old people in assisted living. <laughs> you won't see them again. <laughs> they work in the dietary department of the assisted living community that your children who took your keys and your license decided to be here. <laughs> They're going to work in the yoga place. They're supposed to be getting the therapy. But you can't escape from because you don't have keys, cards, or a license there. You're in bad shape. <laughs> you know what else they're going to do? They're going to be responsible for making our teeth because I'm finding <laughs> that people who are great artists have become people who I did not realize, I know, that the dentist really wasn't the one that was doing the teeth that he did all that other stuff to you. But those kids are making implants and dentures. We want them to fit, right? Because we want to eat, right? Okay, you'll see them again. I promise you, you'll see these kids again. It's one of you. Right in here really looks alike. So it's one of you. But it's in your, in your lifetime of driving a bus, how many kids will you affect? And kids immediately complete a dossier on you. They watch everything you do. They collect every piece of information possibly about you. What well, if you cut your fingernails, if you don't, what color they are, what color your hair was last week. I, I, I will not tell you anything in this session that I did not witness either as a teacher, assistant principal, principal, or HR. And my adults sometimes forget that what I tell them is the truth. And then they become like historical repeaters of information. And then they did this, and then they did this, and then they did this, and then they did this. And it just keeps spewing out to either the principal or their parent or their grandparent guardian or foster parent. Because that's who we get the calls from <coughs> as either principals or transportation. 
And if you're spending four hours on a bus with children, how much information are they collecting about you? A lot. A lot. My bus drivers at Glenbury High School, they were absolutely the best. And I tell them three secrets of having a successful lifetime as a bus driver. Number one, go in and tell them an expectation based on the age group that they are. Don't tell little people don't need nothing on the floor. Be like in first grade. They don't need stuff on the floor. So long as you don't walk on it and step on it in the middle of your foot, bad foot, and it's not a hot car, you're good. You're good. They're going to leave stuff. Then each year, especially how many of you all are driving the same kids like forever? Like they were your kids that, that you know, you have the same, same population, you know them from little people. Okay, they already know if you did what you should do as a bus driver or a classroom teacher, set up the class climate and the culture with your expectations. I don't expect a whole class of women, like so much teachers, they can't remember the bus, what they is. You got 18 rules up there. 14 of them are going to be broken. So if you, if, 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 you know, if you discuss with the contractor or whatever, however you set that up at your yards, have some rules. Because what happens if you don't have rules and they do something to get them in trouble and you in trouble, the first question is going to be, if I have to come out and do an investigation, like, so did you have rules? But then we always stay in like this. Because if they know you have rules, they respect you. Kids really clam up for structure. It's a big secret among them. They are like, I'm dying for somebody telling me what to do. But deep down inside, the most respect you'll get is if you were structured, you said what you meant, you meant what you said, you're consistent and you're firm, and you do the same thing to every little baby on that bus. Because they know that too. And so Jeremy, Miss Bass, has been doing that all ever since we've been on the bus. And I did it today. And actually, I love that word. They all know that word. It must be like an SAT word in third grade. And actually, I did it today for the first time, and I'm in trouble. They told me I can't ride the bus for three days. Well, then you go out and you say, okay, so tell me, Mr. Bus Driver, who's little Jeremy? This is what this is the report I heard from this one over here. They said Jeremy been doing it. I said, I'm just trying to find out because I'm gonna ask Jeremy. And kids tell. That's when they get off and this and this and this. So kids tell. Kids tell. So our customers, we have to deliver the best we can so we can get a product production score of an A. Now you know that you don't get a a, a, a a direction guide with a baby, right? I don't know about you guys, but this is how they do all this. They put the baby all in this plastic thing they want to call a hospital bassinet, and they roll it up in the room, and they say, here's your baby, and then the nurse run out. Well, it's kind of like that when the mother put the baby on the, on, on the bus. She doesn't give you any directions. She doesn't say, he didn't have breakfast today. He didn't sleep all night. He's been coughing. Well, I went to sleep, and he was up all night playing video games. Stay with me now. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not get a manual for really taking care of kids on the bus. We get a lot of rules. We get a lot of regulations. We get a lot of don't do that. Or if you do this, if then, it sounds like an album for problems. But for our kids, they need that. They need that. Parents want you to be understanding for whatever they present to you. It's a problem to them, to them because they're sending you the best they have to offer. They can't do any better. Remember they didn't get the direction book with the plastic bass and that. They just got the baby. They just got the baby and some diapers and possibly, they told me it was four ounces of, four ounces of milk. That's all you got. 
But at least you got food for it. Your children come to the boss hungry. Because the next person they meet that they really love is your food services worker. Because they're going to get breakfast. They're going to get breakfast, a snack, however it works out in the schools that, that you have. When I was principal, we had breakfast on a cart. And the cafeteria people would come out and everybody got a snack. It didn't make any difference whether they were on the lunch list, not on lunch list. And, and, and I was at high school. And I'm telling you, those muffins with white milk, I never saw an 18-year-old get so excited. You don't have no muffins a day? I like those. Those are my favorite. Well, it's the same thing with you. They will decide what's the favorite of you. You can't feed them because they got allergies. So when you get a baby, they ain't eat. They can't eat nothing now. They got peanut allergy, wheat allergy. They got celiac disease. They got some kind of disease. Don't feed them. Don't feed them. You know I'm telling the truth. That's why they laugh. You can't feed them. They can be as hungry. You'll have to wait till they get to the school to see if the parent filled out the medical for the little lady on the cart to feed them. You're telling me I've been in school a long time. <laughs> the routine's the same. Anywhere you go, the routine is the same. Don't feed them. <laughs> All right, so you're on the bus with them. Somebody's on the bus. Now, anybody in here driving two hours one way? Thank God. I'm like, two hours one way? What y'all doing? A snowstorm. Because, you know, that's like exponent four if you if you ride in two hours and it's any event occurs. Any event. Thank God we didn't have children on the bus when the wind blew the truck over a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, and school buses don't have our facilities. <laughs> they were on the bridge a long time. <laughs> so, plant, and now with the bridge, anybody going on the bridge with the bridge? Anybody going to be stuck in the construction? Or, who are y'all the luck? All of you? Are you not all going to be affected by the bridge construction? Oh, good. Y'all the happy bunch. Because <laughs> I had like the second, second group of people. They, they were going to be stuck in like bridge stuff. And it's not going to be pleasant. Now, you know, all right, nine hours to Myrtle Beach, minus the video machine. Because you know, now the $75,000 cars, you got cinematic features in a car. You have, you have certain movies in the first seat behind the bucket seats. And then if you're sitting on the third row, you can get a different kind of movie. But it's costing your parents $75,000 for Wi-Fi in the caravan. Oh my God. So I, I didn't know, third group, third group told me that the young people, if they have a long ride, that they can have their pad and their phone and their parents have downloaded music and move. I, I used to be a parent, now I'm a grandparent, but I think it's supposed to be a kid in this seat we're looking at a movie my mother don't want them to see. So now we got, so now I'm a principal, I'm gonna get the call. Jeremy was looking at a movie, yeah, yeah, especially me, uh, was looking at a movie, we don't approve in my family. Uh, what am I gonna do? What movie was it? Because they can be downloaded. And they can watch it for the two hour ride in the kid's creek. They had no idea. I had no idea, but with the action of all this stuff, it's just wonderful stuff. It makes teachers and bus drivers' lives miserable. Miserable. Don't lose it. I mean, you know, don't let the kid lose it while it's in your presence, because they're going to ask the bus driver. Did y'all see my child's phone? It was the new whatever the latest phone is. Why do you buy your baby that? <laughs> You know, that's just a thought. It's just my whole mind. I'm just thinking. It just doesn't make sense to me. I know you all. If you all are sitting here, you've already exceeded the parents' expectation. Because you're coming back this year to do the same thing again. Nobody's new, right? Everybody's a returnee. Right? Okay, good. So we must like it. No. <laughs> behind that is it's something on every job. It's something on 
if you all are like retired from somewhere, you worked somewhere previously, there is something on every job. I used to tell them that the seniors, that my, you know, they got to graduate, they got to get that English credit. I said, okay, so this is your choice. You're either going to go up there and you're going to do what you're supposed to do and never see that person again. Or you're going to spend time with me, lose an instructional time, and you won't see him again because he's the only one that teaches. But I said, even if your parents come up and move you, there's something with every teacher. So it's something on every job. Now, people be elated and jumping up and down about their job. Chances are not. Chances are not. If a doctor goes home and had a horrible day, he's not jumping up and down that day. Teachers the same way. If they had a horrible day, it, but they chose that. And they want to do that. And you really, truly are driving the future. It sounds cliche-ish. People say stuff like that all the time. But they do graduate, and you do see them again. We're not getting any younger. I don't know about y'all, but you know, I got, I told this man here, I could slab in my face all I want, but that birthday still coming. <laughs> <laughs> that birthday is still coming. So, we're gonna work if we're doing something enjoyable. And I know with certain days, they just, you can't laugh at them, but when they leave and you park that bus, and that crosses your mind in your car, you are certainly laughing all the way home. Because they say, then what's the TV show that say kids say the darndest thing? What did that? And they do, and they tell you the truth. I told I told one uh, one group I said, and the kid I had in the school was the first kid to tell me I had a gray eyebrow. You have a gray eyebrow. I'm like, wait, I'm gonna put my eye out. I'm gonna put my eye out. Like 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 my hand was gonna go directly to the, to that one. But that goes back to that they watch everything. And they're usually never wrong, because I had a gray eyebrow. <laughs> I had a gray eyebrow. And, and, you may, and the, the reason the kid could tell me I had a gray eyebrow, he felt comfortable. With my emotional, social, whatever you want to call it, heartfelt behavior with them, it's a whole lot of glamorous names you can put up there. But if they feel like they're comfortable in a relationship with you, they will tell you the truth, and they will tell you just about anything. Now, for bus drivers and my teachers, I say the same thing. Be active listeners. And there's a reason I'm saying that in this particular presentation and may not have said it a couple months ago. Because kids know everything. They're talking about it. They don't think you can hear it. But we can hear better than them because we're not connected to whatever those stuff is. They walk around with white stuff, those bugs or whatever they call them. I wouldn't even want nothing in my ear to call them bugs. Is another name you can have for it. But because we have not done that, short of the old earphone with the transistor radio, that's all we had. It's all I was going to do with these now go back. It's all I had. It's all I had. We hear stuff. So the most insignificant thing that you hear, get it off of you. I used to tell my teachers, don't hold it, don't hold it, give it to me. Because then I know the steps to manage whatever this might be, or it might not be anything. But we're not taking a chance. Get it off of you. When you get to the yard, or whatever you're in between kindergarten, AM, PM, make a call. This might be crazy, but, and share. Because they're comfortable in the environment you're providing for them. So they'll talk about everything, anything. Guess at the rest. Make it up, they don't care. But they will talk about anything in their back. It's like a, it's like, a, it's like this classroom. I don't know who teaches in here. It's very inviting. I love the lavender paint. That's nice. That's calming. I don't know who teaches. I looked at all of this because it sends a message. I don't know if you all can put little things on, things up on the bus. It's not your bus, but the county bus. They just nothing big, nothing like this. A little star. You should have a star of the week. Oh. No, I want to start with Okay, don't do it. <laughs> I'm wrong. No, somebody deserves some accolades. I know everybody on the bus. They're accolades, they're accolades, but they hate, they don't get in trouble. That's their accolades. Oh, okay. That'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> These babies here was out in front of 
Citadel Elementary School, and it's all about attitude. It's all about attitude. And we form their attitude. We as adults, not even bus drivers, or teachers. We as adults, we're responsible for them. Because they don't know, going back to the direction book, every parent cannot be perfect immediately. We mature into caregivers. We mature into caregivers. Remember, our brain does not mature with our chronological age. So you might have a 13-year-old, brain might be nine. You might have an 18-year-old that's really made in your man because he's shaving. You might have like 15. So sometimes we have to modify what we say and do based on characteristics we have witnessed with the, the young person. <clears throat> no, yeah, you all might have, I, I don't know how you all do uh, car, I mean, everybody driving the car, because I, I know in the Anne County we ran out of parking spots because everybody was getting cars at 16. I'm like, well, that didn't happen in my house. I got one after I you know, graduated high school. But now, everybody has a car, so you go to high school, you request, you know, a parking spot. You don't have enough for everybody. So early dismissal people have to go to a job, or they have to do jump start, or they go to college. Those babies got to kind of have a car. So therefore, you end up with the older population on buses that we did not have previously because they can't drive. I know we had that problem at, at, at Glen Burnie, and I, I ran around asking the communities, okay, if the babies fall over the river, we run out of parking spots. And that was just for the people that had early dismissal, because everybody's 16 got parents fall. So when they built the school and they did the, the yellow line, they only took into consideration like maybe the 1984 people that had the car. But now it's 1993, 1996, everybody has a car. Everybody got the car for 16 years old. They got the car. They got the phone at 11, the car at 16. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's just a different day. Be approachable. That goes back to the baby will tell you anything. Be approachable. They can already sense that your signal is never talk to me. I'm just going to drive the bus. You all have seen charts? Okay, I was going to get like that. And we have Roman seat charts. I know it's in class, not necessarily we have to have one. But on that bus is important. You know if somebody got on in the morning, didn't get on in the afternoon, if the parent picked them up early dismissal. Or if the answer to, to both of those is no, you may have a missing key. Not missing, missing like that, but kind of seeing how they skip school they someplace else, they get another ride home. So just that's really important to know who's missing. That's really important. Know your parents. They really need to be your friend. They might need to be your friend. Because you're really for an hour or however long the ride is, you're co-parenting. You're co-parenting. Because they're in your custodial care. You are responsible for them. I not want to be, you didn't volunteer for this kid. But you are their custodial caregiver. If anything happens on that bus, who's in charge? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no. And we have crazy people. You, you have just courteous drivers. They, they just they cut you off. They cut trucks off. They're going to beat you wherever they're going that you're not going. And they could be going to the same place. Because doesn't it make you mad? If you're riding the bus, you're driving along normally, somebody cut you off and hope y'all end up in the red light. Hey, you stop going the same place. What's the big rush? So parents need to feel like, you know, you're you're exceptional when it comes to kids. You have their safety in your hand. You have their safety. That's really important. It's a huge job. What's the average number of babies you're gonna have on a bus? It varies. It varies. Something done happened. 
Something that happened. I don't know what has happened. And I used to say, when you get out of the car. Well, number one, don't come with the buses. I used to tell my teachers that. Don't come with the buses. If you come with the buses, the bus driver is mad. He already knows your parking spot that you are consistently late. So then the bus driver comes in and says, the teacher that's parked is about 19, but ever cuts me off when I'm trying to um, disembark the children off the bus. I said, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Reports that you're late, you're always cutting her off. And then so she, and this really happened, she had child care issues. She, you know, can't drop the child off till the minute that she can do it. And then, of course, if she missed two red lights, she's, I used to hear all this, she missed two red lights, then she gets there with you. Every day the same two red lights. I understood the day here. But every day the two same red lights are catching you. Well, we gotta do something. Well, whatever the issue is, don't bring it in the building. So that's what I say to bus drivers. I know stuff go on. We wouldn't be human if stuff didn't go on. I know it's hard after lunch. I'm trying. I see y'all struggling. I see y'all had them carbohydrates. They said, hey, my after lunch. But, but, and, and that's true. I know. It, it's a long day. And then you all have a large session at 3 o'clock that I got to present policies to you. So think about me. Oh, Lord, this man said, oh, Lord, now I'm going again. Now I'm going to hurt again. Yeah, you'll see me again. You'll see me again. But just remember, meet the kids with enthusiasm. You're the first face after their parents. And you know, some kids don't see their parents in the morning. Depending on their work schedule, parents are already gone. So you are next to maybe an older brother and sister that they don't value as an adult. You're the first adult they saw in the morning. That's why that relationship building is so important because they'll tell you just about anything. Stuff you don't want to hear. But you kind of want to go, la, 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 I didn't hear that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that's usually stuff you might either, depending on what it is, you might got to report. And then when you report it, that requires me to have three or four hours of paperwork after the normal work day. After the normal work, because we, we have to do all that paperwork. If it's reported to Miss Margaret Allen, Miss Margaret Allen got to tell Mr. Pender, Mr. Pender, then I'll find his way upstairs to my office. It'll be a long day. And half the night. So, but always, if you suspect anything, let them know. Get it off of you. If you don't leave with nothing else today, get it off of you. And I already talked about this. And all of you all read, so I don't have to read every word. Personal appearance. I hate, I hate that, I hate that, I hate when I even got to say it, but some, some of my people don't use the best decision making when it comes to their tires. Please <laughs> check that on a daily basis. And that's enough said. Everybody in here wrong. Everybody in here wrong. But, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we just make bad decisions about how we might want to look at that. And I already covered this. This is so second nature to me. I kind of know it like I really believe it. I really believe that I'm telling you that I'm, I'm telling you and I'm going to tell you. Be approachable. You're sitting in the seat. You don't speak to the kids. I had bus drivers never spoke to the kid. Open up the door. The baby will speak to you a couple times. So they figure out you're not gonna say nothing. The baby can remember, the baby could be here, the baby could be here, the baby could be here. But he's already figured out, I don't know, I don't say nothing And they got that mumble, y'all hate, you know, adults hate that. But you really made that in them. If they can't, hey, how you doing? Hello, whatever they say. Yo, what I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what they're saying nowadays. But if you don't say nothing, if you don't acknowledge it, or you acknowledge it in a way that's begun, hey, hello, hi, <laughs> what, whatever it is, they remember that. And, and, and do you know if they have people that had you previously?
previously, the year before, they compared notes on how you were in 18 versus 17 and whatever. They all they compare notes, just like with teachers, because you become a part of their adult grouping. This is my teachers, my bus drivers, this is my coach. Well, coach always trump everybody else. The coach, they love the coach. He can howl and scream and don't. We don't really do that with the coach. We love the coach. So just, just be approachable. I, that is so important. And this is what I was telling you. Psychology Today says body language, 55% of our communication is body language. It's home. Tone. They know it's not, and how many of you are, I know you all know this, and, I, and you've been saying it forever. It's not what you do, it's how you do it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And being a teacher, like forever, I had to deliver like some bad news. I was secondary. So I gotta go tell the mother on me. So you already rented the venue for graduation. They didn't pass English. Y'all still had a party. Y'all had a party when you can't get your deposit back. But well, baby not graduate. They're not graduate. So you have to deliver some bad news like here, yeah, don't they do they do they deny bus privileges? If you plan on the bus, they take the bus. So you gotta hitchhike to school. <laughs> don't be that for real school today. But so you get put off the bus. How you gonna get to school? Your purse had to oh, your purse. But the parents have to go to work. Then you have bus privileges to suspended. They're suspended. You can't get back on the bus for whatever time they gave you for the infraction. And do you all deliver the, 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 the like the like the breakdown of like you can put off the bus? Do you tell them that or who tells them that? Y'all tell them. Okay, so that's a part of your first day culture environment stuff. Make them right. They will suspend your privileges. <coughs> you can't get to school. And you've got to have an education. I know we say that, we've been saying that for eons too. We've been saying that for eons, but you've got to have K through 12 and you've got to have a post secondary something. Something. If it's skill trade, outstanding. If you want to go to community college, outstanding. If you want to go to four years, that, that's fine. College is not for everybody. But you've got to have something after 12th grade have to. So we don't want to get suspended off the bus. That's going to affect our attendance in school because we can't get there without the bus. And we don't want that. Word to 7% of things that we want to infer to people. It's how you move. Somebody told me, oh, you said it in here already, they, they know when they're coming up the street. That's going to be a good bus ride. It's in the wall. Somebody told me, then they walk around, I saw them come across the street. Like, it's not going to be good on this bus today. And that's when you set up the environment. You already know that they could come on the bus and tear your bus down. I mean, you know, climb the vibe. Hello? <laughs> so you're in school. You can take that right now. <laughs> Oh no, I've learned I never took people's electronic anything because I didn't want to be financially responsible. All right. So how does it communicate? My health is <laughs> so for us, here it is. Um, uh, if you all have attendance sheet, this month back there trying to collect them. That's one. Is it a one? Is it another one over there? Yeah, they're both. Oh, they're both there. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I knew she was gonna come and, and get it. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, I'll teach her. I'll teach her. Uh, 
Um, positive communications. Just remember, I was trying to be positive. So we're gonna find out how to help them. And that's what you say, I'll find out. Don't tell the parent, I just don't know. I don't know. Not in my, I love it. That's not what I do. That's not in my job. I don't, I don't, do, don't, don't do that. Even if you don't want to answer, there's some other ways to turn that around so you can get to the person who can answer it for them. It's important. It's real. And, and be happy to. I, I know I must be poly and I must, I must live in that world. But I am usually happy to help people. Very few people do I just, you know, mix out like that. Except that they do something egregious that we already talked about that I told you don't do that because it was going to eventually concern law enforcement. Now and then I'm a little different. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a little different. But but typically, typically, I, I can help you. Because if I don't help you, it's going to go to the next person and it's just going to escalate, escalate. And if I couldn't solve it on the first floor, matter of fact, if I can solve it in the basement, I'll work with you there. I will work with you there. And I tell teachers that also. I don't want to antagonize the baby. Because the mother's coming. How do we get to the end of the semester and you didn't tell them how many people fell in class because you didn't communicate? Wasn't doing his homework, wasn't doing his homework first week first, first of class. He wasn't sitting. Mm -hmm. The kid knows what the fail or not. Yeah, but we as educators, we have to communicate that. Uh, unfortunately, um, kids don't have two-way conversation with their, with their um, offspring for whatever reason. So unfortunately, they hold us accountable, just like they will hold you accountable for your bus and ride. I know. They know they're failing, but <laughs> the mother and father don't know they're failing because they don't communicate. Um, and then, like I said, if you don't want to handle it, say I'll deliver the message. And then it's up to whoever, however you all work, communications from um, the bus yard or whatnot, then that is the other person's responsibility for it. We don't expect you to handle the work that belongs to us in, 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 in leadership. Just tell us. We want to keep you. We're not trying to make your job hard. We are not trying to make your job hard. But remember, your customers are it's your customers. We want them to do better and take responsibility, but everybody does not take responsibility for your actions. They just don't. And they'll be doing that well into adulthood. One me. I promise you one me. And that's when I turn the camera on. I have that run the film. I might run the film. Load the camera. We have evidence, and I have I covered everything up. This is the only thing I want you to remember. Bus twice, mm -hmm. food services, and we could probably figure in a snack before they got on the bus for the afternoon, but we can't do that because we need an instructional time. We would feed them before they went home because some kids don't get to eat at home. And I know that sounds kind of strange, y'all feeding the kids, y'all got leftovers, bowls in the fridge, everybody's eating, that's not everybody's story. So, questions I can fix, problems I'll try to solve. None. I did the best I could do with my daughters. I had, I had my people that when I got the book of Revelations, they just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that's okay, you all are all grown. I appreciate the time you spent, you spent, you spent with me. And I'm sorry you got two more hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you now.